So uh, bed bugs, uh, unfortunately, it's a reality. Uh, any landlord here who thinks it's not a reality, wake up, it's a reality. Don't be ashamed about it, because it's gonna happen. If it hasn't already happened, a lot of people think that their buildings aren't uh, infected or whatever else, but if you actually do search your building and carefully search your building, you're probably infected. Even single family homes are sometimes. It's just that with single family homes, it's easier to say who the so-called responsible individual is with the single family home. But once you get into multifamily stuff, it is uh, definitely um, a challenge. Um, one, quick, um, one quick story, a lot of condos are apartment buildings that are converted to condos, right? And um, if you happen to own condo number one, and the guy next to you in condo number two has bed bugs, because keep in mind, this is an apartment building that was converted. If condo number two has bed bugs, and those bed bugs are coming through the walls or somehow into your condo in condo number one, because he or she owns the condo next door, there's no way for you to force them to treat their unit, because they own their unit. With an apartment building, if you have bed bugs coming in from the suite next to you, you call the landlord, you call the health department, you call <coughs> the RTB, which is a bad word, call the RTB, and they'll send someone out, or they'll order someone out, and next thing you know, hopefully your bed bugs can be resolved. But if you happen to own a condo, and the guy next to you has bed bugs, there's nothing you can do. You can try going to your condo board and saying, listen, what are we going to do here? This guy has got, he owns the condo, he's infected, he's not, he's not spraying, he's not taking care of anything, or for all you know, he might, not, he might not even be there. He might be on holidays, might be away, might be a hoarder. This is the reality of the world here. So sometimes the, these bed bugs do affect all of us in all different kinds of ways. So um, as a landlord, I, will, I'll, I, won't, I won't lie to you, it has been in our buildings. We've tried to be as diligent as we possibly can We've tried to respond as quickly as we can. we try to solve the issue as quickly as we can. And I'll be honest with you, it's, it can be expensive. And there's a lot of uh, media out there advertising that says, oh, don't worry about it, Mr. Tenant, because the landlord pays. The landlord pays. Well, they don't realize that at the end of the year, the landlord has what's called an expense. Okay? They have heat, water, hydro, property taxes. And they have this one category called extermination. And at the end of the year, if that extermination bill happens to be a lot higher than last year's extermination bill, they can go to the RTB and they can raise their rents. It's called an increase above guideline. And that is the easiest application to get through. And that extermination cost is an operating expense. It's not a capital expense. It's an operating expense. So that's the easiest expense to get through. So that's what landlords are doing. If they spend 10,000, they spend 20,000 on bed bugs or extermination, they raise their rents. So when these tenants walk around saying, oh, we don't pay for this, it's the landlord's responsibility. I'll keep bringing them in. I'll keep grabbing mattresses from the backyard, from the back lane. Landlord will pay for it. Nope. At the end of the day, they pay for it. And that's where I want to make sure the media kind of gets that across. So the tenants say to themselves, wait a second, maybe I should watch out what I'm doing. Maybe I should be a little bit more careful of who I let into my suite, right? Where this person's coming from, where this, because this may be infecting my suite, may be infecting my family, et cetera, et cetera. So as the co-chair of the coalition, I can tell you that there's umpteen, umpteen different programs out there. There's umpteen different organizations, as James will tell you. Um, Bug and Scrub is a, great program for anybody that physically can't, you know, do anything. Um, hoarding is obviously another big issue. It's a mental health issue, hoarding, right? We have a tenant right now who's a hoarder. I've got the health department in there. I've got the family in there. Oh, I won't lie to you, it is, it is a headache, it is a mess. But at the end of the day, all we can do is keep trying. Keep trying, be diligent, stay on top of it. Um, we happen to own quite a few apartment buildings. And what we do is, every month, we do what's called a plumbing inspection, because we pay the water bill. So every month, we go and check the water faucets and the taps, make sure there's no leaks or drips, because let's be honest, most tenants aren't going to call you <laughs> and tell you that there's a leak or a drip, because they're not paying the water bill. But while we're there, while we're checking the plumbing, 
we go and check the mattresses. We check in the crevices of the mattress, and we know what to look for. And if we see any signs of infestation, we're on top of it. Because a lot of tenants won't tell you. Some tenants will, some tenants won't. Some tenants go extreme. They'll see lint <laughs> on, on their carpet, and they'll call you, I've got bed bugs, I've got bed bugs. Meanwhile, it's absolutely nothing. Other tenants are infested, you know, like they're, they got marks all over their body because they're being bitten, but yet they're like, oh, that's, that's normal, that's okay, Nothing, nothing's wrong. So again, it's up to us as landlords to be on top of this. Obviously, people will always say that let's bring back some serious chemicals that used to work back in the day. Those chemicals are now banned. Uh, there's different <coughs> treatments, there's heat treatments. We use a system where we basically take a, um, there's a gentleman in the city who has a, it's called Sleep Tight Exterminators. He has basically a trailer that we rent. We basically take mattresses from tenants, we wrap them up, we put them in the trailer. We take the trailer, the trailer's plugged in, it's heated, everything is killed. And then we bring the trailer back, we take the mattresses, unwrap them, put them back into the tenant suites. And sometimes we have to provide tenants with uh, metal bed frames. Right? Not wood bed frames, but metal bed frames. Because then after that, we use what looks like a saucer. looks like an ashtray. We put those at the feet of the bed frame. And what happens is any remaining bed bugs that are trapped in the walls or that, are, that come out of the walls at night, because they'll come out at night to feed on the tenant who's sleeping on the bed. So they have to climb over the saucer to climb up the leg of the bed to get into the bed. So the next day we'll go check the suite and you'll see, so you'll see maybe hundreds of bed bugs in these saucers. And that's how we attract whatever's left. So we get about 70% of the problem by heating up the mattresses, linens, that sort of thing. And the remaining part of the problem we get by bringing them out and catching them in these saucers. And the second day you'll see 100, the third day you'll maybe see 50, fourth day, et cetera, et cetera until hopefully you don't see nothing again. Now what we do is very labor intensive, it takes a lot of time. Obviously if you're a small landlord, you don't have the time, you don't have the money to do that sort of thing. It doesn't make sense. But again, you gotta figure out what works for you and try it. Because otherwise, this can be a very, very expensive business. Right, bed bugs. And there's a lot of extermination companies out there. Some are great, some aren't so great. But uh, at the end of the day, they're in business, and you're in business. You're in business too as a landlord. <coughs> so hopefully today you're gonna, talk, you're gonna hear from some experts on some different ideas, some different suggestions. Take good notes. We're gonna have some questions up, coming up soon. Feel free to ask questions. We're a small group here, so nobody be afraid. Speak up, ask questions. This is, the, this is the time to do it. And hopefully you guys leave here today saying, okay, we know a little bit more about this problem, or at least we know what we can do when we come across this problem. And at the end of the day, you can tell your other landlords and your other friends who are in this business. And maybe one day we can, uh, I doubt we'll ever eliminate the problem, but I, I would love to be able to control, to control the problem. And most of all, educate the tenants that it is going to cost them money at the end of the day. And it's not the fact that the landlord pays, landlord pays, that landlord pays. All right? So I'm going to call upon our very first uh, speaker. Uh, I happen to know very well. So James is with the uh, Bed Bug Prevention Outreach Coordinator for the West End, um, which is this neighborhood here. And James also sits on the uh, Bed Bug Coalition with myself. So we're going to have James talk on this for a while, and then we'll call up the other speakers. All right. Thank you. James? Okay. So thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, it's a Saturday morning. It's, uh, so it's a good commitment to be here bright and early to listen to his talk. Uh, today, I'm going to go over some general bug, bed bug info. I won't spend a lot of time on that, because uh, I think there's probably, some of that will get covered throughout the day, and I have a feeling that there's a, bed bugs aren't probably as unknown as they were four or five years ago, so I have a feeling probably everybody in the room has some understanding of uh, basic bed bug uh, facts. Uh, I'm going to give a little bit of discussion and thought to having a bed bug plan. Uh, bed bug identification, again, I'll spend a little bit of time on that, but uh, I have a feeling our, our experts from Poolins and stuff can probably speak to that a little better. 
bed bug inspection, uh, landlord tenant responsibilities and rights, uh, resources for tenants, uh, which I will also portray as can be a resource for you as well as a, as a landlord or property owner. And uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about my bed bug program today. So I'll get started here. So it's interesting that we're in a room talking about this today, because 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this wasn't a major issue. Uh, probably post-World War, in and after that time period, bed bugs became uh, very unknown. Uh, before that, bed bugs were very common. They were a common battle. Uh, part of the reasons for a current resurgence of bed bugs is uh, modern pest control practices have changed. How uh, exterminators go after cockroaches and other types of pests has changed to, I think there's a lot more baits and different controls used where blanket pesticides in the past probably would have controlled bed bugs better. Uh, the prohibition of previously used uh, insecticides, some of that I believe is for environmental reasons, some of that I also think is for uh, uh, human reasons such as DDT. Uh, again, as Mary had spoken to earlier, bringing back old pesticides probably wouldn't be a sure win anymore anyways because a lot of those products were starting to show resistance uh, as they were being phased out. But in the 40s and 50s, etc., a lot of those products worked very well and the bed bug populations were knocked down quite a bit. Uh, more people are traveling, uh, going to hot destinations, traveling around, staying in hotels. Uh, that's becoming a major transmission hub for bed bugs. Come back from your vacation, you have bed bugs in the house. Um, use uh, of secondhand furniture or clothing, especially in the communities I work in. Uh, a lot of my clients uh, utilize a lot of those services, and there is a risk of bed bugs there. And uh, increased urbanization. So I'll do a quick true or false. Uh, bed bugs do not spread disease. So if you ever have a tenant that's concerned about that, uh, they're not going to get sick from bed bug bites. It's a very stressful experience, but uh, as of right now, there's no known diseases that can be uh, spread from a bed bug bite. Uh, bed bugs are not caused by poor sanitation or filthy conditions. They're attractive to humans uh, because of our breath, because of our heat, probably very similar to a mosquito. They're gonna come to where they find food. That being said, I will discuss later, and it'll probably come up a couple times today, issues around hoarding, uh, cluttered living spaces, etc., make bed bugs a lot harder to treat and the condition of the building. So on the, on the back end, uh, having an organized living space will make uh, bed bug control a lot more effective. Uh, unlike lice and fleas, bed bugs don't live on people. Generally, a bed bug hitchhiker that's brought from building to building is going to be brought uh, in clothes that were set beside the bed, baggage that was set down, etc., and the bed bug has become trapped on that person or their possessions. It, they generally won't, if I'm standing in the middle of a room where I can run out, crawl up my leg and come home with me. Uh, and bed bugs can't jump or fly. Uh, they can crawl. They're excellent hiders. They can bury in very, very small spaces. Uh, and that's why detection can be a very, very difficult task. Uh, again, bed, bed bug eggs are about a millimeter and a half. They're white. They kind of have like a, a salt and pepper like appearance sometimes on bedding because you'll also have bed bug feces, black spotting around them. Uh, the hatchling bed bugs are a millimeter and a half and they grow up all the way to about five and a half and I've also heard six millimeters is an adult bed bug. So it's basically very similar to an apple seed with legs and they even kind of have a tick like appearance and that's a bed bug on a one cent coin right there. There's the life cycle of a bed bug from egg to a fed adult. Uh, as you can see, when they're unfed, they're very flat. They're, they're almost the width of a credit card. Uh, when they're fed, they do change shape and they can change color a little bit as well. So, to give you some idea of how quickly a bed bug infestation can spread through a room, uh, it can be reflected in the biology of bed bugs. Female bed bugs can lay 200 to 500 eggs. The eggs hatch every one to two weeks. The babies start to feed immediately. I do believe a female bed bug lays her eggs in cycles as well, probably I think a weekly cycle. So once you have a female bed bug that is pregnant, she's going to lay <coughs> eggs repeatedly throughout. So you're constantly going to have a cycle of hatching eggs. Uh, their nymphal stage is 14 to 30 days, very quick. Their life cycle is 4 to 9. And even if you clear out that unit, you're looking at 12 to 18 months those bugs can live without feeding. And they'll migrate to potential food sources as well. So 
with 200 to 500 eggs per female bed bug, um, and that quick of a gestation period of an infestation where they're being fed can get out of control very, very fast. So from a landlord's point of view, even being a small landlord, should you have a bed bug plan? And uh, what, what type of disclosure should you have with your tenants in regard to bed bug issues? I've developed a lot of this from feedback that I've gotten from landlords and property managers and other experts in the community. And this is kind of some ideas that I've put together from what's been successful with, uh, with others and, and what I think would be, uh, and again, you, this would be something you'd want to customize for yourself. Uh, the types of uh, clientele you have, uh, different situations, your buildings, etc. So this isn't kind of a, a strict guideline, but uh, being open with newer current tenants about bed bugs uh, can be very important. Uh, if, a, if a tenant knows, I mean, it's kind of an awkward conversation to have, especially with a new tenant sitting down, but I think in the current reality in Winnipeg, this isn't surprising to people, and it's not surprising to tenants. Everybody I talk to knows somebody who's, knows somebody who's had bed bugs or had them themselves. So to uh, sit down with a new tenant and say, hey, look, here's a, a, you don't maybe have bed bugs in your building right now, or maybe you don't want to disclose that, but say bed bugs are an issue in the city. Uh, this is... There's just a few points I want to go over. Uh, and again, both parties have a genuine interest in keeping bed bugs out of the building. I don't, I don't want to be bitten in the place I rent. And landlords don't want to pay for it. It's very, very expensive. So prevention is the best strategy. Unfortunately, that um, isn't always the case. Uh, setting expectations with tenants uh, and educating tenants on the issue. Uh, I think that can bring a process of cooperativeness that may be rewarded uh, if a tenant uh, finds bed bugs or maybe kind of are more bed bug conscious, if they, if they kind of have a clearer understanding of what the expectations are, are in the building. And I, and I know it's not a perfect world and, and these, you can't always have 100% uh, compliance with, with tenants, etc. And that's sometimes where I can come in as well to mediate some of those situations. But uh, and just kind of having that open dialogue so somebody maybe isn't scared to come forward and talk about it. Uh, when they're experiencing the issue, they're not going to run and grab some cans of Raid and start spraying it around the apartment or putting powders around or doing things that you really don't want going on in that building. Um, and again, provide literature to tenants, uh, if appropriate. And there's a lot of free stuff out there uh, from the province of Manitoba. There's the Billy the Bedbug pamphlet handouts that I give out as much as I can in the community. There's the Province of Manitoba bed bug fact sheets. I, I have these out front. These come in, I think, 10 or 15 different languages. How? 17? 17 different languages. So this is uh, great, especially if you have uh, tenants that are new Canadians, uh, that you want to be more bed bug aware, and you know that maybe just having that discussion uh, with a language barrier might not be as successful. Another thing I've distributed today, and I want feedback on this, this is something I put together on Monday, which is a little bit more of like a tenant-oriented letter on uh, or maybe something that you could give new tenants or current tenants, uh, setting building expectations and uh, giving some advice on how to handle bed bugs. Now, th this, if I distribute this, will be an open format. So I'm waiting to get some feedback on it. If the feedback I get is positive, I would release this as an open word document. So people can modify this to your particular business, to your particular needs, and to your particular expectations. So I have attached my card for feedback. And again, it's going over some, some pretty, basic, pretty basic rules. Uh, not bringing items into the building that have been placed in the back lane or the dumpster. Winnipeg Free Day. Uh, there's a lot of concern around that. What are you gonna, it seems like uh, it, it's a great idea in principle, but what's coming back into the building? Uh, secondhand clothing. It's necessary in a lot of situations, but you don't have to not uh, do these things. If you bag secondhand clothing, bring it to your laundry facility or to a separate laundry facility, empty those contents directly into the dryer and turn on the dryer for 30 minutes and throw that bag away outside, chances are that clothing isn't going to bring any bed bugs back in. Uh, and again, uh, when a tenant goes on a trip, stays in a hotel, et cetera, just being bed bug aware and, and what to do and what your expectations are in your bed bug plan if, if the tenant finds bed bugs. Uh, and again, that goes to building expectations. I know 
some buildings out there and this can be difficult to navigate but have expectations around not bringing furniture in or uh, used furniture being approved by management and uh, trying to set ground, ground rules in and around there so you don't have that cycle of furniture coming in another building and I know you can't patrol that 100 percent but uh, a good hopefully a good percentage of your, of your tenants would uh, understand why those rules need to be in place and uh, having having a plan uh, Mario had spoke to uh, building maintenance checks and ceiling I've, I know another landlord in the city that does his yearly inspections and that's when he looks for bed bugs and he's also taking the opportunity to seal off the plumbing seal off baseboards seal off cracked areas with whether it be clear caulking etc to minimize areas where bed bugs are moving around uh, ha having an extermination option uh, what, do you have a company that you like to work with? Uh, do you have a different plan of attack? Just kind of having a basic idea of that. Uh, it's, it's referred to as integrated pest management. It's generally a variety of things that need to be done uh, when you experience bed bugs. Uh, extermination just with chemicals is only one step in a, in a greater process. And again, smaller landlords, you don't need to invest uh, much time in say a formal policy document or you know anything extensive, but just giving some thought to how you would uh, react if you have a tenant that comes forward and, and they have bed bugs. Uh, again, I'll go over this a little quicker. If a tenant comes to you, they think they have bed bugs, you're going to give some advice to them. First thing, are they being bitten? Do you have any strain bites? Uh, sometimes in groups of three, uh, they'll, they'll cause a red welt in some cases, but a good chunk of the population won't react to the bites at all. So you might have one person in the, the apartment being bit, and the other person saying, oh, I don't get bit at all in my room. But maybe they are, and they're just not reacting. Uh, is there blood spots on the bedding or clothing? That's a pretty good sign that you might want to dig a little deeper. Are you finding feces or molted skin? Again, kind of that salt and pepper appearance of the, the eggs and the, and the droppings of a bed bug. And in a really, really severe infestation, uh, an offensive, sweet, musty odor, similar to coriander, uh, and that's, I believe, what's emitted from a bed bug scent glands. So, but that, from what I've been told, that this is, if you get to this stage, you've already got a fairly advanced infestation. So that's an adult bed bug on somebody's hand. That's a first instar bed bug. They are very small. They're very hard to detect in an extermination cycle where Perhaps your companies come in, they've wiped out the majority of the adult population, but now the eggs have hatched. That's probably what they're looking for when they're doing a follow-up inspection. So that can be very, very difficult to track and keep tabs on. And by the time these are back into an adult stage again, you might have more eggs hatching, more eggs being laid. So uh, again, I, I have a feeling Craig from Poulins will speak to this a little greater today, but generally more than one treatment is required when dealing with a bed bug uh, issue. That's a severe situation where somebody's been bitten quite a bit. Uh, you might see the scenarios where you have senior citizens or mental health issues or, or other things going on. Most uh, tenants probably aren't going to go to that stage without uh, trying to address something. And again, this is kind of the breakfast, lunch, dinner bite. Not common or not uncommon for bed bugs to kind of bite in little groups. Bed bugs down somebody's foot and ankle. So again, bed bug inspection, I'll go over this a little quicker, but um, pull drawers out of the dressers, uh, check all the contents inside, maybe remove the inside contents, checking under your lamps and your nightstands, checking cracks and crevices along baseboards and walls, checking torn and loose wallpaper, decorative borders, behind paintings, uh, the seams of a mattress and box spring, uh, anything that with them a credit card. Uh, bed bugs are present. There, there could be dark spotting or staining on the sheets, mattress, pillows, carpets and even areas along baseboards where they could be hiding, I've, I've seen that as well. Uh, and then to kind of look everywhere <laughs> and on everything. So conceivably bed bugs could be anywhere within a room. There's a bed bug sign in along the seams of the mattress. Yeah, uh, pulling back, this is the kind of the fabric skin on a futon along the wood in that little space there. Uh, in the joints of a table leg. Uh, again, more live bugs right in the seam of a mattress. <coughs> so, and Mario touched this a little bit, but I'll go over it quickly. Again, the general protocol around bed bug infestations, 
Notify tenants that they're responsible to inform you immediately if they suspect that there's bed bugs. I would want I would want this information. I would want to be the first person to get this information. I don't, uh, and that and that would be important to me as a property owner to make sure that. And and when people phone me, <laughs> uh, that is the advice I'm going to be giving a community member. I think I have bed bugs. What do I do? I'm going to have a small discussion. If it sounds like there's an issue going on there, my next piece of advice is: Should I be or should you be phoning your landlord uh, and get them involved in that process? Uh, instruct tenants not to self-treat. Uh, this can make things worse. You want to be in control of any chemical application that goes on on your premises. And part of the reason for that is it, chemicals can act as a repellent as well. Uh, and if somebody is spraying in and around a room or using things improperly, they can break up that infestation, push it into neighboring units, push it around in that unit, and you, you could run into a worse infestation down the road. And especially say they're doing this for six, eight, ten months. Now you've got an infestation that's almost been going on a year that's been being self-treated. Well, now your bill has likely gone up as a result. Um, and again, as, as the landlord, uh, you're responsible to respond to all complaints and have the suite uh, professionally inspected and exterminated. Uh, it would also be recommended by many companies to look and inspect and possibly treat neighboring suites. Uh, it's kind of a box technique above and below to make sure that they're not going to scatter in any neighboring areas. In the majority of cases, and again, I'm just going off the uh, provincial rights and responsibilities as kind of laid out in the RTD. In the majority of cases, the landlord is responsible for extermination costs. Uh, the tenant is responsible to follow all instructions and requests from you and the exterminator, provided they are given a reasonable time frame. Uh, I would provide the tenant with a set of instructions from the exterminator to prepare the suite. And cooperation is key. Uh, if your tenant does not comply to reasonable requests or allow access, uh, that's where, as a landlord, you have the right to seek cost recovery and, and pursue it from there. If a tenant's not letting you in to inspect, and say it's the neighbor, uh, person A has bed bugs, you want to inspect the neighbor's suite, and they say, no, you're not coming in here, you have the right to enter that suite to inspect for bed bugs, and you have the right to treat that suite. And if they block that process, and you pay a company to come in and spray and, the, and it isn't ready or they don't let them in. Now it's getting to the, the stage where you might want to take action against them, whether it's uh, phone the bed bug hotline and uh, get an order issued or through the RTB or, or seeking cost recovery. And unfortunately, this isn't the goal of my job. The goal of my job is I want to prevent evictions. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, a tenant that is fully not going to comply could eventually be evicted from that unit. Um, but working together is the preferred route, and there's good reasons for that. A, it's really hard to treat a room without a body. If somebody's sleeping in that room and those bed bugs are being drawn out and they're active, it's going to be a lot easier for your extermination professional to come in and deal with the issue and monitor the issue. Uh, and that cooperation is your key to success as well. So I, I really work with community members on uh, successful preparation. Uh, linking them to resources, et cetera, and I'm going to get to that in a moment to make sure that they can fulfill that end of the bargain to make your job easier so when it comes time to do that treatment that you're in a better position because that's, that's where success comes from. It's not an era of just walking in and shooting some chemicals around anymore and leaving, and tenants can maybe be frustrated and, and not know that and feel that, okay, that, well, if the landlord has to treat, it's not my problem. Uh, you deal with it. And... The, the reality is if they don't prepare, if they don't do that side of the work, you're wasting your money. And your chances of beating that infestation are, are lowered. Uh, again, the bed bug hotline is a resource for landlords and tenants in the province to request bylaw assistance, issue orders, and seek information. And again, you can also phone the bed bug hotline to look for things like mattress marking tape in your back lanes. Uh, if you have a building next door where you know a lot of stuff's going out, and might be coming potentially coming back into your building. There's this "Do Not Remove May Have Bed Bug" sticker. Uh, you can also slash and destroy furniture that you see in a back lane to make it unattractive for anyone to pick up. Uh, fact sheets are downloadable online, and you can get some of this other uh, material delivered to you as well. Uh, and there's actually I'll speak to that after. I'll move on to the next slide here. So it's actually not what you need to do. It's what the tenant needs to do. But here's some I ideas that are probably similar to what your extermination professional is going to request in the event of suite preparation. Now, there are differences 
uh, between companies, but these are just some things that uh, will help as part of an IPM bedbug strategy. Reducing clutter and accumulated items, regular vacuuming and bag removal, steam cleaning. I have a steamer that I lend out in my communities that I work in, and I'm hoping that other uh, community development corps in other areas, and there has been discussion of it, are going to access some of this equipment as well. Steam's a good tool because it'll kill bed bugs and eggs. It's not going to scatter them. So it's something that a tenant can do as an, an added help in a bed bug response. It's not going to get rid of them, but it can help. Uh, using hot water to wash laundry or alternatively dry clean, and drying clothing in a dryer for 20 to 30 minutes. I would say the 20 to 30 minutes in the dryer is more important than washing. It's that heat at the end of the day that's going to get rid of the bugs. Uh, climb up interceptors around the bed legs. I have some of these here today. They look very similar to say an ashtray that your bed leg is going to sit in. There's a powder in here when they crawl up they're going to be trapped inside the, the item. Good for monitoring again and, and isolating the bed bugs from the food source on the bed. Uh, installing bed bug proof mattress covers and encasements. This can help a client save a mattress. And uh, moving furniture is away from the perimeter of the room and I think it's two feet generally that they need to be away from the wall. And when somebody's moving and preparing a suite, this is good. This is clean. I mean, the picture doesn't move forward, but if we were to pan over, everything would be neatly organized on the floor. You wouldn't have anything piled on the couch. Uh, perhaps items are up high in the closet, clothes or bag. It, it should be a room that's very easy to navigate, a room that's very easy to monitor. This isn't treatable. <laughs> with heat, with chemicals, with anything, this isn't treatable. You're just, gonna, you're just throwing chemical at the wall at, at that stage because there's, there's just too many hiding spots there. Again, if, you're, if your tenant's going to throw their mattress out, not leaned against the dumpster, looking good and free. Uh, there, here's one underneath an open window on a nice summer day, about four feet away. And here's an example of one good thing to do, and there's many good ways to do it. This bag is marked bugs and it's wrapped. Uh, again, you could uh, encourage that the tenant slashes it, destroys it, tapes it, etc., and that it's wrapped, that it's not being dragged down the hall of your building, being bounced down the stairs the whole way, and bugs are coming in. And if it saves you in the long run to provide your tenant maybe with some plastic wrap or assisting in that process in some way, it might be the better strategy than just leaving that up to the, the tenant alone just to remove furniture. And sometimes I'll ask tenants if say they don't have access or you know, are kind of nervous around that issue, hey, talk to your landlord. Say, you want to you throw this out? Uh, can you get me some plastic? Can you help me move it? Or give me some sort of assistance rather than just drag that couch or bed down the hallway and out come the bed bugs. Again, with the laundry, uh, people have bed bugs. You don't want them bringing their laundry down in the basket. You want them bringing their laundry down to the communal room in a sealed plastic bag that's going to go out in the back garbage so you don't have your laundry room as a transmission site for bed bugs to spread throughout the building. And again, um, I, especially on the tenant side, community member side, I encourage this fighting bed bugs takes time. No one should expect instant results. I've been at this position for six months, and my first confirmed success case where it was closed, the inspection's done, and we're at 100% was a month ago. So from the first call in to having a situation dealt with, it, it's going to be time period. And, and tenants or people that, everyone likes instant gratification, especially when they're frustrated. Unfortunately, it's not going to be dealt with overnight. And, and every party needs to know that it's something that you're going to be working with over a period of maybe a couple of months. Um, combating an infestation requires integrated pest management. It requires a series of steps. Uh, in most cases, suites may require more than one treatment, generally two, that is the general rule. And continuing to monitor after treatment is, uh, is great as well. So if your tenant has told you that they can't comply with your request, there are resources out there in the community. For example, they don't have a vacuum, and they live in my neighborhoods. I do. so. And refer them to me. I have good vacuums, in fact, that I'll end up with a deposit. Uh, the income assistance will also provide mattress covers in some situations for free. In some situations, I can provide them for low cost and free in my communities. Uh, if they can't properly prepare their suites, say due to physical limitation, um, uh, senior citizens, etc., we have the Bug and Scrub program. They're going to speak today. That's a great value added because they're going to they do an excellent job of going in and treating areas for. Uh, for your extermination company to come in. And uh, if you have a tenant with health issues that needs to be out of the suite overnight for, 
for various reasons and they have nowhere else to stay, again, if they're on income assistance and their income assistance is provided with adequate notice, I don't know the, how that defines, but probably a week or two notice, uh, they will generally provide with uh, overnight accommodations. And another resource is me. And there's other, uh, generally, I know that NERC and uh, Central Neighborhoods now is getting a bed bug strategy together, et cetera. Other community development corporations in the city are starting to get more and more tools for bed bugs. There's a small bed bug grant that uh, some nonprofits can get up to $2,000. I've gotten it and I've used it for uh, different items, including mattress covers that I can give out at a low cost or for free, traps, etc. So we have a small budget that we can work with and that's becoming more increasingly common. I just wanted to stress it again. That that's just not an area that can be can be treated for bed bugs. Uh, and, and I'll give a little bit of insight to my program and what I do. I started in September 2012. This is a pilot program. It's, I serve the Daniel McIntyre, St. Matthew, Spence, and West Broadway neighborhoods. I work with tenants, landlords, nonprofits to educate, uh, reduce the spread, and effectively combat bed bug infestations in our community. Those are some of the goals of my position. Uh, I provide workshops, similar to today, for all different groups, staff in the city, uh, tenants. I, it really doesn't matter, so I'm always available to speak. Uh, I'll do on-site visits. Uh, an example of that would be uh, bug and scrub applications or a, or a tenant visit, etc. So I will come on-site. I'm not a trained exterminator. I'm not a trained inspector, so I, I have to be careful as to what I can do in that regard, but I, I will come and help. I connect landlords and tenants to resources and educational materials in the community. So for example, hoardings come up a couple times today. Uh, you have a client, they're a senior citizen, they have a hoarding issue, you don't want to evict them. This needs to be dealt with over the long term. I'm not a community mental health worker, but I will try to connect them to those resources. For example, Agent Opportunity has a This Full House program. And I'll look into that for you. because. I, I want to I want to help, and I, so I'll do what I can in those situations to uh, get resources or access for, for for tenants that are facing different circumstances. Uh, I will mediate landlord-tenant relations, and I've I've been involved in that a couple times. Both parties are interested in some of these situations. They're frustrated, but they're interested. They want to work together, and sometimes just having somebody who has a strong understanding of the whole process kind of maybe assist with some of that, can relieve some of the tension going on with the situation. I update local listservs and contact lists on new bed bug resources and initiatives, and I write in community publications on bed bug related topics. Uh, again, back to the program resources. I have free vacuum and street steam cleaner rentals with an ID and a $50 deposit. I have access to low cost or free bed bug prevention materials. I connect tenants to community resources. I will assist tenants with the IA requests. And uh, I have a small working budget as well that I can go off of for community initiatives. Uh, that's actually where my, my steam cleaner idea came from. And that's been very, very successful. The steam cleaner is booked quite often. So I've been I'm very, very happy with that decision. The vacuums are popular as well. And uh, again, how can I help you? A lot of the Landlord strategies and ideas I've gotten through my position have been with feedback and booking meetings with property managers, et cetera, around the city. And if, as long as it's within my mandate, I'll, I'll give it a try. For example, I worked with uh, a landlord in another agency um, employed a different community group about two weeks ago, and we wanted to play a little bit of Mythbusters on the bedbug CO2 traps you see on the internet. I don't believe that those would be an effective combat tool, but I wanted to see if they would trap bed bugs, and, and so did the landlord. And we, it's, you can watch the video on YouTube, it's four plastic bottles, and you kind of build a, a trap out of them, and you basically, you're making uh, some home brew, you're adding sugar and water and yeast, and, and that's creating CO2, and attracting the bed bugs into the trap. So we gave it a shot in a couple of rooming houses, and sure enough, some of the traps caught up to 60 bed bugs in one week. So again, I'm, I'm not gonna advocate that to anybody as a successful bed bug elimination tool, but we just did a little bit of myth busting. There's a lot of bad information on the internet and there's some good information on the internet. So sorting through that, or uh, another person has approached me on uh, printing off bed bug fact sheets in multiple languages and addressing uh, 
uh, a building with a lot of new Canadians and, and specifically targeting them on bed bug awareness. And that, hey, great idea, I'd love to help you with that. So that's just to give a couple of examples. And some bed bug resources and websites. Uh, the province of Manitoba has a low cost materials program that can cover uh, interceptor traps, uh, bed bug sticky traps for detection, mattress covers for your tenants if you want to provide that or they want to buy it through you, et cetera. So there's a, you can get access to that, I do believe, through the Manitoba Bed Bug website or Google, uh, Province of Manitoba Bed Bug Materials Program. And there's a order form that's going to come up and there's about eight or nine items on that list that you can order. Uh, disposable laundry bags that are going to dissolve in the, in the wash, et cetera. So the, those are resources that as a property owner you can access. Uh, and there's also videos on, on the Manitoba website. There's a lot of different resources there. Uh, bedbugger.com is a U.S. website. Uh, Bedbug Central, another U.S. website. I've read a lot of interesting blog pieces and stuff on, on different boards. Again, you have to take all the information out there with a grain of salt. Uh, nobody is a probably a true bed bug expert. Otherwise, we probably would have had some magic way to resolve this issue by now. I'm not a bed bug expert. I, I think I know a lot about bed bugs, but uh, it's 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 communities working together and working with I work with extermination professionals. I work with other people in the industry and consult with with what I do to make sure that the services I'm recommending to people and carrying out are are effective and and that I'm not spreading any misinformation in the community. And I think I am done. So we can turn it over now to I guess Mario. And thank you for your time. So, some uh, really good information from James. Um, a lot of basic facts on what we're dealing with here. Um, some uh, interesting pictures. <laughs> some very interesting pictures. Yeah, some cartoons. Um, Obviously, some of those pictures are a little bit of a severe case, <clears throat> but I have seen scenarios where you have a senior, um, a senior citizen, actually a female senior citizen, and she had bed bugs on her arms, and because of her mobility issues, she wasn't able to, you know, wipe them off or get rid of them off her arms. She wasn't physically able to move her arms. Mm -hmm.